Uh, go to Bhagavad Gita. Yes, Guru Maharaj. If, um, yeah, go to the 14th chapter. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Go to text number five. Safa Rajas Tamam E.T. Guna Prakriti Sambhavaha Niyabad Nanti Mahabaho Deho Dehinam Avyayam. Material nature consists of three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Still, because he, uh, when, the, the li when the living entity comes in contact with nature, or Mari or Jum, he come, becomes conditioned by these three modes. Purport, the living entity, because he is transcendental, has nothing to do with the material nature. Purport, the living entity, because he is transcendental, has nothing to do with the material nature. Still, because he has become conditioned by the material nature, he is acting under the spell of the three modes of material nature. Because living entities have different kinds of bodies in terms of different aspects of nature, they are induced to act according to that nature. This is the cause of varieties of happiness and distress. Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in this same um, chapter Krishna says there there's nothing beyond these three modes of material nature. So what he means is that materially, everything is, the whole material energy consists of these three modes. So although it's one material energy, it's divided into three forms of energies, which affect, the, affect, affect and afflict both the living entity in different ways. Happiness and distress is somehow uh, categories within these three modes. Mode of, mode of ignorance is simply distress. The, 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 um, the mode of passion is a slight bit of happiness with mostly distress. And uh, the mode of goodness is considered to be happy, happiness. So this is the, this is the, results of the association with the three modes. So we'll give a little overview of the different characteristics of each mode. And uh, you can go down the page actually and go to the, we'll go to the, the mode of ignorance. And I think one of the upcoming verses is the mode of ignorance. The next one is the mode of goodness, but we want to save that one for last. Go to the mode of ignorance. Okay, here we go. Tamas to agyanam tam vidhi, ohinam sarvadehinam. Rama Dalasya Nirdrabis Nirdrabis Tanibadnati Bharata. So Krishna speaking, O son of Bharata, know that the mode of darkness, born of ignorance, is the delusion of all embodied living entities. The results of this mode are madness, indolence, and sleep, which bind the conditioned souls purport. 
In this verse, the specific application of the word to is very significant. This means that the mode of ignorance is very peculiar qualification of the embodied soul. The mode of ignorance is just the opposite of the mode of goodness and the mode of goodness By development of knowledge, one can understand what is what, but by but the mode of ignorance is just the opposite. Every fellow the mode of ignorance becomes mad, and the madman cannot understand what is what. Instead of making advancement, he becomes degraded. The definition of the mode of ignorance is stated in the Vedic literatures. Under this bowl of ignorance, one can understand a thing as it is. Example, everyone can see that his grandfather has died, and if he, he will die, man is mortal. The children that he conceives would also die, so death is sure. Still, people are madly accumulating money and working very hard all day and night, not caring for their eternal soul. This is madness. In their madness, they are very reluctant to make advancement in spiritual understanding. Such people are very lazy when they are invited to associate with spiritual understanding. They are not much interested. They are not even active like the man who is controlled by the mode of passion. Thus, another symptom of the embody is the mode of ignorance is that he sleeps more than required. Six hours of sleep is sufficient, but a man in the mode of ignorance sleeps at least 10 to 12 hours a day. Such a man appears to be always dejected and addicted to intoxications and sleeping. These are conditioned by the mode of ignorance. So this is the lowest mode. Most of the activities in this fall under the category of v-karma, and that means inauspicious activities, degrading activities, sloth, laziness, indolence, madness, intoxication. These are all forms of activities in the modes of ignorance. Um, people in the mode of ignorance accept the, the lowest base form of activities to be forms of enjoyment. For instance, you know, excessive sleep. People think if I can sleep, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, then, you know, it's good. So generally, excessive sleep is simply to do to uh, the fact that one's life is miserable. So they find that in order to minimize that misery, I just sleep more and more that that helps them forget about the misery. But what it does, it simply compounds their misery. It's just like a man who is suffering from some type of intoxication. So he takes another form of intoxication to neutralize that. And he becomes more intoxicated and he suffers more. So this, this idea of sleep, when Srila Prabhupada was speaking one time about the four, the four activities of the body, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, he said out of the four, oversleeping is the worst because it adds to the others and it simply wastes the valuable human form of life. Sleep is required, but as it says here, one should sleep six hours a day. That is, that's a healthy man will sleep that much and sometimes even less. People in the material world believe if they don't get eight hours of sleep, you know, they can't be happy or healthy because their lives are so miserable and sleep becomes, and when they go to sleep, they're so far, they're so deep in their sleep that they're oblivious to everything around. Even if you make noise, they don't hear anything because their the mode of ignorance is so deep. So it's a it's a lower quality 
intoxication, and madness. Prabhupada gives the definition of madness here. Madness is simply working hard to accumulate money and uh, not caring for actually, you know, who I am and what is the goal of life and how to become happy. And just working hard to get more and more money and so they can try to use it for more and more degraded forms of sense gratification, such as sex life and uh, intoxication. Their lives are suffering. Everything they do brings about more and more misery. Even their forms of trying to enjoy is another form of misery. They don't really enjoy. They simply uh, nullify, they, they deaden their senses by so much intoxication that if you were to give them some nice prashadam, they, they can't even re appreciate it because their senses are so dulled by the uh, by sense gratification and the mode of ignorance. Uh, madness, uh, violence, these are all, violence goes in passion and ignorance, but unnecessary or what we say, violence that comes by way of no, no particular reason. And that's that's in the mode of ignorance. There's no reason for the violence, but people act violent anyway. So this is the lowest mode. Now we can go to the next one, which is the mode of passion. It's the previous verse previous two verses, so you have to go up a couple of verses. Was that the mode of passion, Raja, Rajgat Mikam Vidhi, Trishna Sangha Samud Bhavam, Tan Nibadnanti Kaunteya, Karma Sangeda, Dehinam. The mode of passion is born of unlimited desires and longings. O son of Kunti, and because of this, the embodied living entity is bound to material fruit of activities. Characterized by passion between man and woman. It is the principle of attraction between man and woman. Uh, hankering for material enjoyment, sense gratification, prestige and honor in the society and nation, Sit, wants to have happy family life, so just works hard to make money. Bound by fruit of activities in order to please his wife and children and keep a prestige, he simply works hard. So character is by working hard for material results. Sometimes you see devotees also, when they engage in devotional service, they're very much attached to the results of activity. And that attachment causes them some distress. A devotee will perform an activity and he offers the activity to Krishna and devotion. Even if there's some endeavor for a particular result, a devotee is not attached to it. Although he tries for a particular result in his devotional activity, he is not attached to it. He's attached to trying to please Krishna although he may endeavor for a particular result. But sometimes we become overwhelmed with the result and not so much the activity. And uh, we, be, we, we suffer distress because, or we suffer from uh, excessive, uh, what we say, utilization or uh, jubilation. Oh, it worked out so nice. But then when it doesn't work out, we're not happy. So this is the mode of passion. Money, sex life, having a lot of material possessions, having a lot of 
material relationships. These are all part of the mode of passion. One somewhat good quality for the mode of passion is that it's a creative mood. That one endeavors to uh, do something in a creative way, which will be beneficial. So creativity, you might say, although it's in the mode of passion, it's not so degrading as the other aspects of the mode of passion. Um, the whole world today is more or less fun functioning on these two modes, passion and ignorance. Goodness is practically gone. There might be a little bit of goodness here and there, but it's hard to see it in everyday life. Everyone is working, struggling to enjoy the world. That is the mode of passion. More, more, and more. The principle is of more is the principle of motivation for the for persons of the mode of passion. More enjoyment, more accumulation, more prestige, more. And you see, people have so much. People in general have so much material possessions. Sometimes they can't even store it in their own house. They, they buy these big warehouses to store, store all their accumulated material possessions. And sometimes they don't even know what they have. They have so much, they forget about it. They just store it and they buy more. <laughs> Years ago, when something was bought, it would be fashionable. I mean, I, I'm sorry, if something was bought and it was, it, it was broken, it would be fashionable to, not fashionable, it would be the way to go is to try to repair it. But nowadays, when some people break things, they just buy a new one. <laughs> Why worry about fixing? it just throw it away we'll get a new one we'll get a better one so you see the whole the whole earth is being exploited for more and more junk you go into stores all around the world this stuff is stockpiled to the ceiling of all kinds of products that people can purchase most of it 95 percent of it maybe even 99 percent of it is not necessary. That's the world of passion. It just impels one to the principle of more. I have to have more money. I have to have more position. I have to have more honor. I have to have more, uh, you know, sensual enjoyment. More, more, and more. It never ends. It's like adding fuel to a fire, expecting the fire to go out. The fire will go out. It will simply burn brighter. That is the mode of passion. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, when lust comes in contact with the mode of passion, it turns into anger. And that anger is the all-devouring enemy of this material world. One nation wants what the other nations have. So many of the Western countries are greedily and lustily looking in the area of the Middle East. They want to get all that oil there. Why should the Arabs have it? Why don't we have it? So and then they find ways to get it. Sometimes they create espionage, various types of 
plans to get it, steal it. Well, this is uh, this desire for more is really a very deadly disease. We find in Krishna consciousness the devotee is meant to live according to the needs. Ishavashamidam sarvam yat kincha jagam tel jagat tena japtena bundi jaha magriha kusiswidaram. The first verse in Sri Ishupanishad says that everything animate and inanimate is owned and controlled by the Supreme Lord. And one should uh, live according to their quota. In other words, one is allowed their quota in order to keep body and soul together in Krishna consciousness. And, and, excuse me, in the second verse, it says if one lives accordingly, then one can aspire to live for hundreds of years. This is the way to live. Live according to your needs and not according to your greeds. Well, even devotees, they stockpile so much junk. <laughs> I'm sorry to speak so strongly, but I see it all the time. People have so much junk. And they just store it in their closet, in their basements, and uh, hoping maybe one day I'll use it. But in the meantime, they forget about it and they just buy more of the same thing. Yeah. I have to get a computer every new one every two years. I have to get a new car every five years. I have to get a new wife every 10 years. You know. So a new husband. It actually, I'm I'm not actually being facetious. I'm actually saying that people, they also change relationships just as much as they change clothes. Because they're not satisfied with one relationship or something's wrong, have another relationship. More different. That goes on in the more as the mode of passion also. Never satisfied with what you have. Simply want something different, something more. There was one uh, overthrow of one uh, king who was ruling in Africa. His name was Haile Selassie. Maybe you've heard of him. I forget which country he was ruling. It might have been the Congo or something. But when they overthrew his government and went into his wife's quarters, they found three pairs of shoes. The lady had 3,000 pairs of shoes. Now, what, is it possible? to use them. I don't think she was a centipede or maybe something similar, but 3,000 pairs of shoes, that's like, it'll take you like nine years. Even if you change every shoe, pair of shoes once a day, you get through 3,000. So yeah, this is this is madness. Simply accumulating more, and what is the what's the result? The earth suffers because it's being raped for more and more material, useless material things. Mode of passion. We see when this lockdown happened in March of last year, and after a couple months, people were not traveling. The earth was starting to clear up. We were reading news reports that places in the world that were so polluted were now clearing up and people could see the sky. People could see the mountains in the distance. We couldn't see them before because of the pollution. More cars. More. You gotta have more 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 and more 
it's a disease and it's a sickness that destroys the living entity and it destroys the uh, earth itself also. And then we go to the last mode, the mode of goodness. Uh, is there a, yeah, Tatra Sattvam Nirmala Vat Prakashakam Ananmayam Sukha Sagena Bandati Jnana Sagena Chanaga. Oh, sinless one, the mode of goodness being purer than the others is illuminating and free from all sinful reactions. Those situated in the mode of in that mode become conditioned by a sense of happiness and knowledge. So this is the purest of all modes. It's illuminating. And there's a nice purport here. Quite long. So one is happy, one is active, the other one is helpless, the three modes. These are psychological conditions of the, the living entities connected with a particular mode. The mode of goodness is not so much affected by material miseries, the sense of material advancement. People are more or less freed from sinful activity. Prabhupada then goes on to say that the disadvantage of this mode is that people think them they're better, they feel them more advanced than others in knowledge. And this is a type of conditioning also. Comes proud of his knowledge and feels, and he feels better than others because he has some kind of material happiness. So Prabhupada, um, refers to Krishna's statement where he encourages the, the living entities to go from the, the lower modes to the mode of goodness. That in the mode of goodness, you can practice Krishna consciousness properly, and that will bring your consciousness to transcendence. Because as soon as you engage in devotional service, you are above, you're on the liberated platform. And when you engage the activities of the mode of goodness in devotional service, they become suicide or transcendental goodness. And they elevate one's consciousness towards Krishna in devotion. This is the best of all modes, but there is also a sense of conditioning there. When Pra Prabhupada was, was uh, Talking about this mode of goodness, one devotee said, well, in the mode of goodness, there is happiness. And Prabhupada said, yes, but also the characteristic, the main characteristic of the mode of goodness is knowledge. And Prabhupada said that knowledge teaches you that there's no happiness in the material world. So as it's, people feel a sort of happiness happiness because it's again based on external conditions this is a little bit about a mode of goodness so be situated in the mode of goodness but there's nothing beyond these three modes we might say the mode of goodness is happy the mode is uh of ignorance is uh, is degrading sadness. Okay, so the only way you can get out of these three service Tina Kongsati Sama Sarvi Subhute Shumadbhakti. In the 14th chapter, verse number 26, the same chapter, 
Krishna says, rise above these modes by engaging fully in devotional service. And then one is free from the influence of all three modes. That means one is free. One is not bound by the qualities and characteristics of any of these three modes. As long as one is still fun functioning within the modes of material nature, one has to take birth accordingly. When Prabhupada talks about the, uh, in one purport, he talks about the evolutionary process of uh, transmigration of the soul. It says when, before the living entity gets to the mode of, uh, gets to the human form of life, they usually, if they come into the human form of life to the mode of goodness, their previous birth was a cow. If, they're pre if they've come from the mode of passion, their previous birth was, a, was a, a jungle animal such as a tiger. And if they come through the, in the mode of ignorance, their previous animal birth was a monkey. So we see even the animals somewhat symptomize different modes of material nature. Although they are not designated that way, that you'll see that some animals are more affected, are more exhibiting, not affected. They exhibit more of the mode, one or more of the different modes, more than other animals. Okay, so any questions or comments? Thanks, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it clarified very nicely in terms of all three modes. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, comment or realization, please unmute yourself or you can type in chat window. Hare Krishna. Yes, everyone, please turn on your your cameras, Guru Bhakti, Suda, Vishwapavani. Turn on your cameras. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Mansi, Swaha, Ananda Vrindavan. And we have Namrata here is all ready to ask us a question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. Happy to see yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, it's all because of my son. My son is actually uh, inspiring me constantly. From two days, I'm, I'm a little busy with the household work and he's telling me, Okay, mom, it's 8.30. He's reminding me of the class. You have to go to the class. Don't do other work. Uh, go to your class. <laughs> so, you're, yes, you're, at eight, you're at 8.30 in the evening, right? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, you are. We we'll keep you up very late, don't we? Uh, yeah, after the class, I go to sleep. So, it's 8.30 to 9.30. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, Maharaj, I, I was asking about the greed. Uh, when we hear that, you know, the more, more, more tendency is not that good. But sometimes when we are into something competitive, uh, example, if we say, okay, somebody is running a marathon, you have to uh, attain more targets, you know, uh, lesser timing, more targets. Then if it comes to knowledge, you have to take more knowledge, more knowledge. If, th if this greed is there, is it a uh, healthy greed or is it not? No, it's in the, it's in the, it's material, it's in the modes of passion and ignorance. Healthy greed means to take, to dovetail that desire for more by performing more devotional service, more chanting, more reading, more association with devotees, more in the sense of spiritual activities. That's healthy. 
anything material is degrading because it, 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 it relegates one to another birth in the material world. I mean, as, as long as you're performing material activities, these things will be there. It might look healthy from a material point of view, but from the spiritual point of view, it's not. <laughs> it might it look normal from the material point of view. Yes, you have to, you know, work hard or try to get more in order to overcome another person in a competitive way. But that's simply the same thing. It's just seems like it's authorized there, but it's the same as any other kind of grief because it's based on the body, that's all. So only the greed related to spiritual activities or devotional activities. Can you hear me, Maharaj? Is it, uh, am I clear? Um, it could be a little clearer, but I'm I'm hearing, but it's a it's, okay. it's 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 an effort to hear. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll I'll raise my voice. Is it good now, Maharaj? Okay, better. Okay. okay. Uh, so only the devotional uh, devotional activities or spiritual activities when we have greed for that greed for that. Only that is healthy. Yeah, that greed is becomes transformed into into bhakti. It becomes an ele element of uh, pleasing Krishna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maharaj, here is my son. Oh, hello. <laughs> what's what's Say your name? Know. What's your name? Brad. Brad? Speak loudly, Rohan. Say His again. His name is Rohan. Ruh Rohan. Yes. Rohan. Yes. Hare yes. Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Nice to see you. <laughs> you look like a nice young boy. <laughs> what happened yeah. to your, What happened to your teeth? <laughs> what happened to your teeth? Uh, it is new teeth. They are new teeth. <laughs> he's, waiting for, he's waiting for his new teeth, huh? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. He um, he helps me a lot to uh, keep up my sadhana, Maharaj. <laughs> good, you can do sadhana together. That's nice. Mother and son together. Yes, he he he's fond of listening to the stories. So yes, I uh, tell him stories from uh, Bhagavatam, and uh, he's more fond of Ramayana. <laughs> he's what? He's he's more fond of Ramayana stories. Oh, okay. See Ram J Ram J J Ram. Ruhan, you want to hear a Ram <laughs> a, a, a Ramayana story? Do you want to hear? I'll tell yes. you a quick one. You, you, okay. you know who you know who Vibhishan is, don't you? The brother of Ravana. Yes. Okay, he was a real he was a devotee, but he still was a brother of this demon Ravana. So he was favoring he was favoring Lord Ram. So what he did was all over Lanka he wrote the name Rama, R-A-M-A, -A, all over Lanka. And so Rama's name was all over Lanka. And uh, when his brother Ravana saw that, he got very angry at Vibhisha. And he said, why are you writing Rama's name all over? And he said, my, my dear brother, I'm not writing Rama's name. R-A stands for you and M-A stands for Mandodari. Mandodari is Ravana's wife. So R-A-M and then Ravana's, yeah. 
And so that in that way, Bibishan tricked his brother Ravana and he wrote Rama's name all over and he said it was Ravana's name and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj's favorite incident is uh, when uh, Hanuman takes a, a huge leap to cross the ocean. Mm. Yes, he jumps. He jumps over the ocean, and he meets uh, Mainakar Parvat and uh, Surasa and Simheka. So that's his favorite story. So who is that? Yes, this is Hanuman. Hanuman Chalisa. Yes. Jai Hanuman. Jai Hanuman. I hope you <laughs> I hope you become strong enough to to fly like like Hanuman also. Okay, so thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hey, Krishna. <laughs> he speaks very in a very low tone, Maharaj. <laughs> He's a nice boy. Oh, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare so, Krishna. Vrindavan Nath, take over. Thank you, Maharaj. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any other questions, comment, or any. Uh, Realizations, please do share. Guru Maharaj, I have one question while other devotee raised this. Okay. Um, see, we every time hear that devotional service is the key, that's the essence for our life. Yeah. And for that, we need to like move ourselves in mode of goodness and then transcend into uh, devotional service. Mm. But still, like in this life, it becomes, it, or it seems to be quite difficult. Is this because of lack of knowledge or lack of greed, as Mataji said, for uh, devotional service? Or is it conditioning? Conditioning. Conditioning will, will uh, gradually uh, go away as we recondition ourselves in the activities of devotional service. But if we keep feeding our conditioning, then it grows stronger. And then, although we're doing devotional service, we're not we're not minimizing our conditioning because we're still feeding it. So we have to, therefore, we have to avoid those things that are contrary to our progress in devotional service. And then you have to know what is contrary. Devotees fall into that. Devotees are good at performing devotional service, but they're not so good at getting rid of their material activities. So although they are, they're engaging in devotional service, they minimize the effects of their spiritual life because they still take uh, interest in material activities and, and look for happiness in, through those activities also. That's why devotees don't make advancement because they're still looking towards material life for some happiness, some enjoyment, some satisfaction, something. If you want, it said, Prabhupada says, you begin your devotional service when you are no longer interested in anything material, then your devotional service begins. Before then we're practicing, we're getting a taste. But we see the three modes of material nature. Everything material is contained within those three modes. And mode means, mode means conditioning. And mode also means rope. So we get conditioned and tied up by a particular type of conditioning. And then we're stuck. <laughs> the only way you can overcome that is the power of your devotional service. And the best way is through uh, developing uh, chanting 
offenseless chanting will help us get over that any of that material conditioning. We have to chant and very carefully avoid offenses. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. I, yeah. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Uh, rather we have to be patient. That's Sorry. All. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, I like. I heard like oh, in one lecture uh, yesterday, which is kind of eye opener, but to reach to that stage is a bit difficult. It was saying that uh, uh, normally devotee feels that they have this problem, that problem, they are suffering from this challenge. But the only challenge or only suffering is when they are really missing their holy name. If they keep that on their tongue, then every suffering, like that's the only suffering. So they should only think. But any problem, any challenge, or the biggest challenge in their life is when they forget. Vrindavanath, we can't hear anything you're saying now. You're too close to the microphone. Everything was nice until you got closer. <laughs> Sorry, Guru Maharaj. I thought you were not able to hear. Is this better, Guru Maharaj? I, I, that's normal. Yeah, that's, you're, that's good. I didn't, you have to repeat everything you just said. I couldn't hear any of it. <laughs> <laughs> really sorry. No, I was saying I uh, just heard one of the best uh, like a message in one of the lecture uh, in the last few days. Very difficult to reach to that stage, but it was saying the biggest suffering or biggest pain for devotee is when they are missing holy name. So if when they have any material problems or material challenges, they should completely come out of that loop and should think, am I missing holy name for that moment? So if they keep holy name on their tongue or in their mind, it should continuously move and then every problem will go. Yeah, mm -hmm. the holy name is Krishna himself in sound. We take shelter of Krishna. And we are associating with Krishna through the sound vibration. In that association where we are freed from the effects of the material energy. It works. You just have to continue to chant. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj, that's true. Okay, I'm going to have Thank to you. run. I have to run because if there is an, something that just came up that's unavoidable. So I'll see you all tomorrow. But, um, let's see. Um, tomorrow is a little complicated schedule for me. Mm. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll let Srimati know if I can be here at, a, at the same time. If not, we might have to find someone else to give the class tomorrow because I do have to travel in the morning, so it's going to be a little difficult. So, uh, but I may be able to do the class and I'll let, I'll let Srimati know and she'll put She'll put it on the conference for everyone. But sure, consider, Guru consider the class will go on. Um, there's a slight chance it won't. <laughs> when I'm traveling place to place and doing outside preaching, um, a lot of times it interferes with these Zoom classes. So we try not to cancel these classes, but sometimes it's unavoidable. Okay, so Suda, Philip, Swaha, Shamarani, Ananda Vrindavan, Sukavaha, Satyabama, Guru Bhakti is not putting her video on, and neither is Mansi. Vishakapri uh, is also hiding, and so is Madhavi. Uh, Guru Bhakti Mataji so, mentioned in the chat, Guru Maharaj, that she's in school, so she can't open that video. Oh, okay. Uh, Madhavananda, he's probably in his greenhouse. Nityanataraj is probably in his car. Madan Gopal is sitting next to me. And I can see Vrindavanath. Okay, very good.
<laughs> Muncie, Muncie's camera doesn't work. Okay, nice to see those I can see and nice to be with those I can't see. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Ananta Ti Vishnu Brind ki jai. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. Vishaka Priya Vrindavan, there you are. Did you like the new name? Yes, it was very nice. Yeah, I thought it was appropriate. Yeah, we, we changed the material energy into the spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From, uh, Anasuya's mother got initiated just two days ago. She was 75 years old. And we gave her a new name. Mm -hmm. She is now Shamarani. No, no, no. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, not Shamarani. <laughs> Purnamasi. Purnamasi. <laughs> I was just looking at Shamarani when I said that. <laughs> so her name is Purnamasi. Okay. Personification of Yoga Maya in the spirit in Vrindavan Dham. Haribo Satyavrata and Madhvi. The, uh, the, the Londonites are there. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you both. Thank you much. <laughs> I'm stuck in your sister country called America. Thank <laughs> <laughs> well, you. Well, you're in good time, though. I'm in the sister mm. city called New York City. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in what they call New York is called the Big Apple. <laughs> but sometimes the apple is not so fresh. <laughs> okay, we got Satya Bama and uh, and uh, Vrindavan Dam there. Okay, I hope you like the names of the your new your new Gurnitai deities. Yeah, very nice, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. It is yeah. Ananda, so it makes it perfect. <laughs> Well, they're, they're, they just exhibited so much transcendental happiness in their countenance that there was no other name I could think of. They're very so good. happy. They look very happy. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. You're really, really so blessed. Now you have to make them more happy. <laughs> I wish I can. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, make them more here. happy. They'll, they will make you more happy. <laughs> <laughs> The best way to make them happy is to chant Hare Krishna. Have kirtan in front of Gornitai is worshipped best by having kirtan. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We have kept a house program for Sharat Purnima in the house. So hopefully. And Kartik month as well. Every day. <laughs> We try to do our chanting there in the temple. <laughs> yeah, every, every day. Some. <laughs> Hare Sukhava. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Welcome. Always happy to see you are personification of Sukhava. Always blissful. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. All the rest to you and all the rest to Shila Prabhupada. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see everyone. We have to go because there is an emergency on this side. Okay. So we'll see you all hopefully tomorrow. Okay. Let's go. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj.